Swine flu has been sweeping through the local university campus, and we have had the best part of a thousand logged cases with swine flu-like symptoms, and we have already had one fatality from the virus. I am currently down with flu-like symptoms myself, and I figured this would be an appropriate time to revisit the subject of swine flu. I would like to use a metaphor here if you'll indulge me. I want you to assess if it's safe to play Russian roulette based on the following events. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead, Nicky. Ha, 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 Now, there will be those who examine this scene and apply inductive reasoning. I mean, look, the first guy pulled the trigger, nothing happened. And the second guy only got scratched. Therefore, it's not really dangerous to play Russian roulette. Now, I actually agree with Ron Paul on several issues, but healthcare is not one of them. And they rapidly came up with some flu shots, and uh, the government was going to inoculate everybody and save the world from this disaster. And I remember there were two votes against it, uh, myself and Larry McDonald, another physician. Uh, it turned out, though, that uh, our instincts were correct. Not only did we object to it because we didn't think the government should be in the medical business and making these medical decisions, but it turned out that the instincts were absolutely right because uh, the flu came and the flu went and one person died except for those individuals who died from getting the flu vaccine and over 25 people died uh, just from getting the vaccine and many got ill from it until finally they had to suspend the whole program. Others a little more astute in risk and hazard assessment would realize the fact that just because you don't blow your brains out every time you pull the trigger this does not mean that there is no danger associated with the activity. This is the metaphor that I would draw for pandemics. Just because you don't get tens of millions of dead every time someone mentions the word pandemic. But it turned out that the instincts were absolutely right because uh, the flu came and the flu went and one person died. Does not mean that there is no danger. We know pandemics can kill tens of millions of people. The 1918, or well, thereabouts, influenza wiped out about ten times as many people as Jews were killed in Nazi Germany. The current swine flu outbreak has demonstrated that a virus can spread worldwide within days to weeks. However, this is vanilla compared to what a modern pandemic could do. For some ballpark figures, if this was the H5N1 virus, it could spread to about maybe a third of the world's population, and kill about one person in three. That would give you a projected death toll of about 600 million people. That's about 100 times as many Jews as were killed by Hitler. Indeed, it's about one-tenth of the world's population. That means that if this was a pandemic of H1N5, this is about the odds that everyone on Earth would face. The current swine flu has been a comparatively harmless way of learning. Well, I mean, it's probably going to kill in the end hundreds of thousands, but that is getting off comparatively lightly. But it's been a comparatively mm, easy way of learning just how quickly a pandemic can spread in our global civilization. We only got nicked this time. Initially, there was no vaccine, and I myself was impressed that one was available within only six months after the virus being identified. It's a triumph of modern technology. However, it's been depressing to see people's reaction to both the infrastructure that produced this and people's assessment of the dangers of vaccines. This is not a dig at the free market, but it's of little use in the event of a pandemic. You need these facilities to be in place beforehand for making large amounts of vaccines. Similarly, there is significant worth in having global organizations that can identify places where such viruses are likely to emerge and to pay them to develop the infrastructure to contain outbreaks. As for the hazards of the vaccines, following Gear Up, that's the new PCS, displaying his mind-blowing ignorance on the subject, that will be the topic of Why Do People Laugh at Creationists Part 31, even though this really isn't a matter for humor. As for my 
flu-like symptoms. While I went to get checked out today and the profile of my symptoms is not typical of the swine flu being reported here. I had a relatively long run-in time of about four days with a dry throat which quickly worsened to other conditions including a runny nose, somewhat unstable temperature and mild fatigue. However, the flavour of the swine flu mostly being reported here is characterised by a rapid onset of a high temperature accompanied by other symptoms common with the flu. Only a tiny number of the most suspected cases are sent off for laboratory confirmation and it was the doctor's opinion that I just had a seasonal flu at a coincidental time. However, infections like this can be highly dependent on the individual, so I am still doing what I deem to be the socially responsible thing in staying at home. But it's an interesting question with respect to freedoms. If you look on the big scale, it looks like this virus kills between 1 in 100 to 1 in 1,000. So if I had the virus, and I were to exercise my freedom to wander around in busy areas, it's likely that I could infect so many people that someone would die. I'm curious as to how people would view this problem. Would this be murder or manslaughter, or would I, would I be entirely within my rights to wander around in a built-up area while sporting a contagious disease? There are even more subtle shades of grey. What if I were to merely go to work? knowing that I had the virus and a co-worker were to die. Ignoring the moral conundrums for the moment, let's just say the virus kills one in a thousand and extrapolate to the whole population of the US. Let's say one third of the population gets infected. That's about 100 million people. That gives you an expected death toll of about 100,000. That's about twice the expected death toll from the seasonal flu, although the demographic there tends to be the old and the weak not college students. Another way to look at the numbers is that's about 30 times the death toll from 9-11. And just look at the resources that were put into preventing that from happening again. I find it sad that anyone could watch this virus spread worldwide within weeks and propagate through the populations, knowing that this sort of virus could be capable of killing one person in three that gets infected and concluding that it's all media hype.